Like lucid dreaming I'm lucid Hey Joe Berg, how are you guys doing? So um, please send food and drinks because I'm lost in a bookshop in Johannesburg. I have just found the coolest bookshop that I've ever seen anywhere in my life. And the best part is it's right here in your city. We're talking five floors of books, about half a million vinyls. This, this, my friends, is just amazing. Okay, so after about 20 minutes of wandering around down here, um, I think I have figured out how to get out of here. I still need to go upstairs and chat to the owners of the... Nope, that's not it. Owners of the shop. And find out how all of this, this, how all of this came about. I mean, this really is mind-blowing. You have to... Nope, not that way. Not that way. You have to get down here and come and visit this place. It is just there. We found it. It's that way. Okay, up the stairs. Let's go. Actually, I've got to flip this around so you can see these staircases. Play back with Back onto the first floor again, I think. And wandering through, I think we found the office and the man responsible for this craziness, this awesomeness that is the coolest bookshop in Joburg. We're going to have a chat with him and find out what this is all about. So, Jeff, I've just walked through your shop and it is really the most mind blowing thing I've seen in Joburg in a long time. Tell me how it came about. It grew. Obviously you didn't start out life wanting to be a bookseller. Well, it, it, I suppose may well have been in the back burner for a long, long time. But I started out in an academic kind of career. I went through various stages until I graduated as a science historian, specializing in medical history. And I was offered a doctoral fellowship at the University of Chicago and I looked at it decided that I was one of the top three most retrenchable type of academics that existed and together with my brother Jonathan and my late mother we decided rather to start the shop and forget and forget about the fellowship at Chicago and see how it went and we started out with obviously or not so obviously uh, excess from one's personal collections we took the upstairs offices on top of the AAS workshops in what is now the fashionable 44 Stanley Avenue that was then just a warehouse district, factory district and from there we grew and grew. We moved into town in 1979, we moved into bigger premises again in 1984 we took the whole of Bethlehem House in Rissick Street and in 1991 we bought the present building. That's where we are. 91 to 9, and if you had to estimate, est a serious estimation of how many books do you have in here? We have 2 million, roughly, what I would call books, but it, books and collectible paper items. So it's books, pamphlets, magazines, and print, printed material in general, and a half a million vinyl records, which we also do on a large scale, apart from the other collectible stuff. Now, my favorite thing about this space is the lack of technology so it's not your typical bookshop where you kind of well i suppose you are the technology i could come up to yeah. you and say i'm looking for xyz and you could probably tell me yes, where I it is new chips installed <laughs> an upgrade so, an upgrade but jokes apart it's, there's nothing which substitutes 
for the personal contact. That's the problem with most book selling in Johannesburg, not so much in the second hand and used trade, yeah. but certainly in the new book trade, where the people who are selling the books don't know anything about what's in them, don't know where, even where to put them. I won't mention the um, particular retail outlet to which a client of mine went and asked for War and Peace by Tolstoy and was directed to the military section. So, um, you know, and that tells you, that tells you everything in a, in a way. I've had people who come in here and want to barcode everything so that I can find it. And I just tell them that we just whistle and the books come running. Well, uh, uh, along that sort of path line, what are your future plans for the space? I mean... Well, I, I have my next move planned. It's very simple. I'm in one box. The rest of it passes on to other people. Um, I hope my brother's children will be interested in it. Um, I'm not planning to go anywhere in the near future, <laughs> future unless forced. And um, so we, we carry on and we accumulate more and more stock and we accumulate more and more customers. And we recycle to the extent that we've been in business now 43 years. And it's reached a stage where we're now buying back collections of books from people who were our first clients. And you can imagine if they yeah. were in their 40s when we started, they're now in their late 80s and beyond. And so it's a, it's, it's a full cycle. And that, that's another inter interesting topic. Where do you guys get your stock from? Um, a variety of sources. Basically deceased estates. People condensing down are our best source. People moving from a bigger house to a smaller residential premises, people who have collected something and then decided, right, my collection is no longer of use to me in one way or another and they want to sell it. Basically, wherever, wherever books are sold, uh, I may well be found. Have you guys ever thought of maybe like a little retail operation out in the suburbs? With we your... had one. We had a bookshop together with a partner in Hyde Park Shopping Centre for three years in the middle 90s. And one of the problems with having lots of other outlets is that you may get more exposure, but they're expensive outlets, so that the rental and costs involved actually eat up the extra turnover that you do in yeah. some ways. And the other thing that happens, and I've seen it with people who have branches in the same kind of business as we are, um, what happens ultimately is you become a kind of high-grade business foreman because all, you, all your time is taken up going around your outlets mm -hmm. to see that somebody is running them properly for you. And you don't have the personal contact with the customers. The personal customer contact is the most important thing. Makes for a different kind of social economic environment from going in and buying a can of beans at a supermarket and having a checkout tool which just buzzes over it and says, thank you, Here, take, give us your money and take your tip. So that's the thing I love the most about Johannesburg because everything here is so interconnected and you can start off a day like I did today with no stories and just end off the day with really stunning stories. I mean, what an awesome place this is. Enjoy your evening and I will chat to you tomorrow. Cheers, Joburg. So not the greatest end to the day, a little addendum to the vlog to the complete and utter tosser that tried to steal my car and completely stuffed up my ignition so that I'm now stuck on the side of the road in the middle of Joburg. Thank you so much. I really hope the fleas of a thousand camels infest your... Okay, so as you can see, I am driving, which means that my car's working. So this is how it goes. Uh, let me break it down for you. Dude number one tried to break into my car. Well, he got in and tried to steal it, but didn't succeed. I then had to pay dude number two a couple hundred bucks to finish the job and get my car started for me. So I'm currently driving around like this. So if the cops stop me, it's going to be really interesting to explain to them why I am starting my car with a screwdriver and all the parts are lying on the floor over there. Um, it's going to be an interesting conversation. Who do you think they're going to believe? Me? Somehow I don't think so. Um, and then there's dude number three. Now, dude number three is me, because 
dude number three has to now pay for a new ignition, pay for new door locks, and dude number three, just, yeah, anyway, no Joburg bashing at all. This is not about the city. This, this stuff happens all over the world. End of story. Um, but a fairy tale ending to this, you know, would be so cool if, you know, BM or Land Rover or one of those awesome car companies would, you know, be watching this vlog and maybe just blow me one of their uber cool cars for a week or two. Just because, you know, I'm having a shooting day. Anyway, you finally, for the third time, I think, you have a fantastic day and evening and whatever. Catch you tomorrow. Cheers, Joe. Now feeding the skin.